Here's the bladder. Here below it is the prostate. In this dissection, the bladder has been filled slightly, which brings it just above the level of the pubic symphysis. When the bladder is full, it rises up into the lower abdomen. When it's empty, it flattens out. The bladder has a covering of peritoneum only on its upper surface. Down here, the bladder tapers towards its outlet or neck. Here behind the bladder is the rectum. In this dissection, the fatty connective tissue that lies between the bladder and the rectum has been removed. To see the structures that are just behind the bladder, we'll take the rectum out of the picture. We've also cut the ureter short. The ureter, here's its cut end, enters the bladder out to the side, passing through the bladder wall obliquely. The ductus deferens comes around almost to the midline, widening to form the ampulla. Here lateral to the ampulla is the seminal vesicle. Here's the right ampulla and the right seminal vesicle. On each side, the ductus and the seminal vesicle join down here to form the ejaculatory duct, which passes through the prostate to enter the urethra, as we'll see when we look at the reproductive system. To see the inside of the bladder, we'll look at an isolated specimen that's been divided along this line. The wall of the bladder consists of smooth muscle lined with mucosa. On each side, the ureter opens into the bladder obliquely at the ureteric ostium. Urine leaves the bladder through this opening, the internal urethral meatus, to enter the urethra. This projection just above the urethral meatus is called the uvula. The mucosal lining of the bladder is thrown into irregular folds which flatten out as the bladder fills. The mucosal layer is relatively flat in this triangular area between the ureteric and urethral openings, which is called the trigo 